we're back in World but Audrey territory, folks, with the 20th episode of the third series, Tender Engines, based on the story Tenders for Henry from the Railway series book, Enterprise in Engines. This is an episode that was going to introduce a famous steam locomotive from the real world, but couldn't due to budget restraints. But I'll go into more details after I go through the story. Gordon grows agitated when he is criticised by James for taking on too much coal and from Duck for taking on water from a temporary standpipe. He claims that big engines have big needs and little engines are just annoying. Later, Gordon is impressed when he sees a visitor with two tenders and wishes he had the same. But he becomes depressed when Diesel arrives and gloats about how Diesel's victory over steam engines on the mainland. Gordon's mood worsens when Duck and Henry tease him about boiler egg the next day but he perks up when the Fat Controller assures him that steam engines will never be obsolete on his railway. The Fat Controller also mentions that the visitor had two tenders due to the shortage of coal and water between stations on the mainland. While Gordon feels much better, Henry is cross and says that he deserves two tenders for his hard work. Duck decides to play a trick on Henry with Donald's help and courses Henry into pulling some spare tenders. Henry is initially delighted, but when he comes to claim them at the end of the day, he finds out that they are old, dirty and filled with boiler sludge. As the other engines watch Henry grudgingly pull his tenders through the station, Gordon teases him with the same joke Henry used earlier. I'm a good wash out, Henry. Gordon voice. That's right, you'll feel a different engine now. Henry was not sure, but he thought the voice belonged to Gordon. If you haven't guessed by now, the two tenders in the episode belong to the famous Flying Scotsman, who was originally intended to have a much larger role in the episode. But due to budgetary constraints, the entire locomotive model could not be constructed and never appears. As a result, Flying Scotsman was rewritten oddly as a stranger to Gordon rather than his brother. Of course, we all know Flying Scotsman would later appear in The Great Race, where he is probably established as Gordon's brother. I can only imagine if they'd have been able to finish the model, then his role would have been much the same as it was in the book. Have him come over to the island to cheer Gordon up when he finds out about how steam is have been abolished and how the most of his classmates and brothers from Doncaster have all been scrapped. It's safe to assume that this is probably how the episode would have gone if they had been able to finish the Scotsman, but since the budget didn't allow them to finish anything other than the tenders, then they had to compromise and do something else with it. And for something that was beyond their control, I think they worded him really well. I especially love how Diesel was the one that told Gordon that the Diesels had taken over on the mainland which plays to the real life thing about how steam has been abolished in Great Britain in the 1960s, and how diesels took over the whole railways, which paves the way for the events that are to come in the next episode. But I'll get into that when I talk about the next episode tomorrow. Everyone knows that tenders are a mark of distinction, but I'm afraid that no amount of tenders will save you in the end. We diesels are taking over and we don't need tenders to make us important, not even one. Gordon was Some might see it as a missed opportunity for them to not bring up Gordon's Doncaster brothers that had all been abolished with most of the steam on the mainland, since that was a heavy thing for Gordon in the railway series, making him realise that he's not going to live forever. Cheer up, Gordon, said the Fat Controller. I can't, sir. The others say I've got boiler ache, but I haven't, sir. I keep thinking about the dreadful state of the world, sir. Is it true, sir? What the diesels say? What do they say? They boast that they've abolished steam, sir. Yes, Gordon, it is true. What, sir? All my Doncaster brothers draw at the same time as me. All gone, except one. The guard's whistle blew and Gordon puffed sadly away. But because they weren't able to finish the best of Flying Scotsman's model, you can understand why they made that change. And having the Fat Controller reassure Gordon that steam will never be abolished on his railway, it's just very reassuring to me. Cheer up, Gordon, said the Fat Controller. I can't, sir. Is it true what Diesel says, sir? What does he say? That Diesels are taking over. Don't worry, Gordon, that will never happen on my railway. And one more thing, sir. Why did the visitor have two tenders? Because he lives on a railway with long distances between coal and depots. And most of Henry's old tenders have any on the sides, indicating that they are Northeastern Railway gallant tenders. And by the way, because the Thomas community will probably kill me if I don't bring this up, this episode introduced one of the show's many memes. That being this one. I wouldn't drink too much of that water if I were you, Gordon. It might give you boiler ache. Ah. 
said Gordon. What's this? Educating Gordon, eh? First James and now you, Doc. Big engines have big needs. Little engines are just annoying. I've just seen a meme for that quote pop up pretty much everywhere on the internet. It's one of those random quotes from the TV series that's just become so popular that it ended up becoming a meme somehow. And I love it for that reason. I also love in the opening of the episode how we actually see Gordon taking on coal and taking water from the standpipe, since they mentioned it in the opening of the book but we never actually got to see it. All we have to go by was James and Duck bringing it up to Gordon when he says that he isn't happy. So getting to actually see these two things happen in the episode is just what makes it slightly better than the original story. Of course, it would have been even more better if the Flying Scotsman had appeared properly, but you can't have everything sometimes, can you? But for what they had to work with, I think this is a really well-adapted story. Not being able to finish the Flying Scotsman model completely due to budget restraints, so they had to improvise and come up with something new. And to add Diesel into it is just a highlight. I know I've said this quite a number of times before, but it's always a highlight for me to see Devious Diesel pop up every now and then in the episodes. It just reminds us that he's still a devious presence and still poses a threat to steam engines with his nasty words. And despite not featuring properly in the episode, the Flying Scotsman became so popular in the Thomas community that he ended up being sold as toys a few times. As an Urto model, which is just a repainting of Gordon's model, two wooden railway models, and a quite impressive Hornby model as well. Even though it's just Gordon's face, but it's still cool to have a Thomas version of the Flying Scotsman in Hornby form. Tender Engines is an episode that I used to re-watch a lot of times whenever I put it on VHS and DVD, and I continue to do so to this day. It's an entertaining story with a funny ending, it's nice to see Gordon and Henry take centre stage in the episode, and it's just all around entertaining. It may not have Flying Scotsman have a big appearance in this episode, but we would get to see him in a big appearance years later during the show's renaissance era, and it's definitely worth a watch for those reasons alone.